Welcome to Good Mythical More. Let's talk about some strange survival stories. But first, let's tell a 10 word story. Okay. You wanna start? Simply, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> You're so critical of me and that's what you do? It's a Sometimes. Story. Touches. Where? It. Doesn't. Feel. <laughs> so. Slippery. <laughs> <laughs> Simply Dan sometimes touches where it doesn't feel so slippery. <laughs> <laughs> Simply Dan. That's a good. That's a good story. Wait, hey, we it, did it. Wow. Is Simply Dan like a, a character? <laughs> Simply Dan. No. What's Simply Dan gonna no. do this time? Simply, comma, Dan sometimes touches it. Like, touches where, it, it's not Simply Dan, no. It's simp Sometimes touches where it doesn't feel so slippery. Yeah, because he wants to grab hold of things and hold on. Uh, Friction's but good. Like, I think this is a response <laughs> to something. Oh, don't take it away. I need to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think it's a response to something like, <laughs> like a, like a, why, a, a conversation in a cartoon. Why like, is Dan on his, on all fours right now? So enthusiastically. Like, well, because simply Dan sometimes touches where it doesn't feel so slippery. <laughs> you know, it's like after a, after an ice storm, Dan is looking for the rough spots just to remember who he is. He's all about <laughs> traction. <laughs> He's like, I gotta find the places where the ice hasn't frozen over. I gotta find it where it's not so slippery just to remember I'm human. Are you into survival stories? <laughs> we are too. Are you into Stevie telling us survival stories? We are too. Are you into Stevie telling us survival stories that we are into and so are you, but then some of them are fake and we get angry? We are too. Let's do that. Let's play that game. Hey guys. Uh, hey so Stevie. So it, it's either Booyah, that's real, or Boom, nah, that's, that's fake, that's not a real story. Can we talk story. about real and fake for a second? Because like, I feel like, so we got these from the internet, they're, for, oh. they're people's stories. I know where you're so going. So you have to believe that the, the people are telling the truth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, some of them are articles, some of them are Reddit, Reddit is, um, but that's what we mean by real or fake. Like, I mean, what's real, so you they're, know? So they're all fake, but. I mean, if you're you a cynic. If you're a cynic, they're all fake. Have you, if you're a believer. As a, someone who's on the Reddit on a regular basis, Link, have you noticed the phenomenon? Did you know? That, that you're when, on Reddit? That when when yeah, when I, travelers, would enter, travelers would enter the city of Alexandria, they were required to turn over their books for copying, and then they would be given back the copy, and then the original would stay in their library. You learned that on Reddit. Yeah, I did. When people tell a story on Reddit, like, cool. like a TIFU kind of story, um, that it's not kosher. Today, Reddit TIFU. Today I fudged up. Oh, oh, I'm not on that thread. Oh, come on over. Um, Is it a good one? Any any story thread that's a story. Or, yeah. Am I the a hole? You know all that stuff. Yeah. People, it's not kosher on Reddit, in my experience, to question the validity of the story. The original poster is kind of just like, all right, we're gonna go with, we're, we're not gonna get into endless debating whether or not you're telling the truth or not because we would do that on every post. So why don't we just assume that you're telling the truth and deal with it as if it's true. Have you noticed this? Uh, on stories that are obviously fake, by the way. Actually, no, I haven't noticed that. You should go to Reddit more. I think the... Am I the a-hole? I haven't noticed that. T-I-F-U, definitely I've noticed it. Okay, I'm not on that one. All right, first story, we're ready. This is from Reddit community, Let's Not Meet. Reddit user The Deepest Regrets writes, I was driving home Christmas Eve on some backcountry roads with my girlfriend when something darted in front of our car. I slammed on the brakes and walked into the forest to check out what it was. That's when my girlfriend, who was still in the car, started laying on the horn. Turns out there was a completely naked man, covered in mud, holding a hatchet, circling the car. My girlfriend said he walked back into the forest just before I got back to the car, but before he disappeared into the woods, the man looked at my girlfriend, smiled, and waved. When we reported him to the police, 
They said this was a tactic to lure people into the forest to kill them. What? Well, well, I don't understand the tactic. He went after the wrong guy. He should have gone after the guy, not the gal in the car. Yeah, this, yeah, you got me paranoid here, but again, we're gonna do what they did, and we're gonna assume that it's real, unless it's fake, because that's the game. We can't do what they do. I'm going with Booyah on this one. I'm going with Booyah. I think that this was, a, this was posted to Reddit, is the only thing that I'm confirming. If somebody, if so, something or runs by your car and you have to slam on brakes, it's like you don't get out and go after it into the woods. That just seems. I agree with that. I don't believe the story is true. I just believe it was posted on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> I would say a boo nah. Rhett's correct. That's what I mean. Like it's like yeah, okay, we'll yeah it's a real, it's a real story. But did it happen? I don't know. You know what did happen, Stevie? What? This morning, I put on this hoodie. You know, and the reason I put it on is because this color of hoodie, the green embroidered mythical. That's since blue. 19, blue. <laughs> <laughs> the green. The reason I said green is because we asked the members of the Mythical Society to vote on whether we should release the blue or the green, and they chose blue. And that's why I put it on. Only barely, though. Yeah, but I mean, look at this. It's embroidered, Link. I mean, this is that's go to mythical.com. That's embroidery. If you're into embroidery, you either doing it or having it on your body, well, we can you can get it on your body this way, three dimensional. It's uh, real. That hoodie. It's real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hit us again. You know, I put it on because it's green. The thing about that story that rings the most true to me is that the man waved at the girl in the car. Like, of course, like that happens on on a regular basis. Yeah, that right. Yeah. You like my mud suit? Yeah. And you, my hatchet. You've worn a mud suit before. Uh, mud oh. shorts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Late. Dirt shorts. Dorts. Dorts. On a Friday night in September of 2016, a Florida man Here was dumpster go. diving, which is technically not against the law in Florida, in a dumpster near the lot of a warehouse. As he climbed into the large industrial dumpster, the lid slammed shut on him and the bar lock wedged itself just enough to trap him inside. Mm -hmm. The Florida man spent the entire weekend inside the dumpster with temperatures upward of 100 degrees. Oh, gosh. On Monday, an employee at the warehouse found the man. He was taken to the hospital and treated for dehydration. When asked whether he'd be going on any more dives, he said, absolutely, it's all about the thrill of the dive. Florida man, that's all you need to know. I, I I think that's sound reasoning, but I'm gonna go with Boo Na because you, you're playing into Florida man? the Florida man stereotype. Aha! Yeah, it's fake. <laughs> it sounds real though. Yeah, I that, feel like it sounds so like So the realer ones happen. are fake and the faker ones are real. Okay, I get getting it stuck in a Man, getting stuck in a dumpster in the hot weather, think about the way the dumpster juice would just be wafting into your mouth. I mean, but there is stuff that you could eat, probably, and survive. You'd be vomiting. At a warehouse? You'd be though? vomiting. Hey, you'd be surviving. All right, hit us, hit us again. This next creepy tale comes to you from the snow-capped mountains potato? of the Andes. <laughs> this next cream potato. This next cream potato. <laughs> Two experienced hikers were climbing the Ciula Grande, a 21,000 foot mountain in the Peruvian Andes. When snowstorms moved in, the men decided to rope themselves together. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, one climber fell, injuring his leg. They couldn't continue climbing, so the other he decided to- He fell and to drained his leg? Injured his leg. I injured I'm not his hearing. leg. I can understand the way you're saying Injuring words. his leg. Okay, sorry. They couldn't continue climbing, so the other decided to lower the injured hiker down the mountain. Mm -hmm. However, another snowstorm hit, and the injured hiker was left dangling mid-air. In order to survive, the uninjured hiker had to do the unthinkable. He had to cut the rope. This is a movie. Miraculously. I was worried about saying that word, <laughs> but I did it. I could tell. <laughs> the Green injured potato. hiker landed in a crevice and was able to use the remains Provost. of the rope to lower himself down the mountain. Both men survived the ordeal and said if the rope roles had been reversed, they he'd done have the same cut thing. the rope too. Now, oh, this I is a movie and I've seen it. So is it based on a true story or did they just come yes. up with a story based on I the I think movie? we've talked about this on this show. So this is Booyah. This is real, because it's yeah, a movie. Yeah, 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 I remember this. Or yeah, it's real. 
I don't know if it's a movie though. I think it's a maybe a documentary. I think the guy showed the story in the documentary. Because the guy showed us up later at camp, and like, I, I mean, you you have this. I, like, I had to let him feel, go. You feel a bit stupid. No, the guy who he cut. No, yeah, I had, to, I, I had to let up. him go, but then yeah, then he shows, then he shows up. up. It's kind of like the Revenant. That's what happens in the Revenant. What if this what, isn't a, a movie? In, in a what if we're ever? But you both have the same memory of it. What if we're ever in this situation? Let's just go ahead and make the decision. Who's now. who's on the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> Because if you're on the bottom, I'm I'm cutting you loose, buddy. Uh, I think in our in our relationship, either one of us could be the top or bottom. Uh, you know, while hiking. Yeah, I don't know how our relationship plays into hiking since I've never I've never done rappelling. Um, I'm waiting for the movie name, but all Dave and typed was "Oh no." <laughs> oh no what that we knew the movie? I think that was a reaction to your conversation I don't think it's called oh no the movie <laughs> oh no I'm gonna oh, have to no, cut the him movie. it sounds like a blockbuster most yeah. people yeah. know that the Ferris wheel made its debut at the Chicago World's Fair in 1913 in uh, 1857 I think the World's Fair started in uh, late 1800s 1893. Yeah, but I didn't know that. But what some people don't know is that a man nearly lost his life in preparation of the debut. One of the many engineers who designed and built the wheel was test riding alone when it stopped at the top. After an hour of no movement and unable to effectively communicate with the ground team, the engineer took matters into his own hands and attempted to climb down the Ferris wheel. He, of course, slipped and fell the equivalent of six stories, hitting two large spokes on his way down, mm. which ultimately broke his fall and saved, saved his, his life. life. What's his he, name, Dan? He cracked he was, multiple he was ribs, for the non-slippery parts. shattered both Ferris. his wrists, and fractured his right shoulder. But the good news was locks were installed on the doors of the wheel just prior to its debut. Huh? So no one else could do that. Yeah. yeah. You just can't. Yeah, that that's true. That's true. The guy, the guy hit the spokes, and that's what saved him. The Ferris wheel had a life after that. I mean, if the guy would have died, none of us would be enjoying Ferris wheels like we do now. This feels real. Constantly, to me. this feels real. Yeah, it feels real. Ah, uh, it's fake. It's a movie called Touching, Touching the, the Void. Boy. Yes. No, hold on. We were talking about the previous thing. Yes. Cut yeah. the rope. Touching the void, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That's a deep cut, I feel Dang. like. Dang, Touching the Void was listed in PBS's 100 Greatest Documentaries of All Time. The Guardian described it as the most successful documentary in British cinema history. Yeah, you can't, <laughs> you can't pull one over on us when it represents one of the 100 Greatest Documentaries of All Time. Who do you think we are? We've seen all those, all 100. <laughs> We've touched okay. the void. But we've were avoided you on the touching. Top? Touching the or void the is bottom. a way to determine. Uh, touching the void is also a, uh, the technical medical term when you touch when you touch your own poop. Don't touch your void. <laughs> <laughs> is is don't void? Don't touch your own void because when you void, that's like pooping. Uh, that's a medical yeah, term. No, for it's voiding. a different word, but you're it's really close to void. No, voiding is a term for pooping. No, it's not. Yes, it is. You're saying the medical term for poop is void? No, defecate is a medical term, but voiding is a t is a technical term that you can use. And then, and then, and now. Oh, he voided himself. I can say, they can say that on like an ER table. So He voided himself. So There's some doctor so out there. So a verb. Yeah. But if you touch. But the poop laying there is not a void. I, I, I would just say one step closer. I, I think you could. Because you, you said touching the void. You could extract the, the verb the noun void for poop from the verb voided for pooping. He touched his own void. Avoid the void because the void is poop in a hospital. Guys, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but this is the final question okay. of the game that we're currently playing. Do you yes. have an opinion about touching the void? About touching poop? Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Well, don't have children. Because <laughs> you, you just find yourself with a handful of it, or any occasion. Yeah, right. Yeah. Where did this come from? Uh, it's just there. Um, 
there's no way. I mean, it's three to one at this point. So right. this there's, is. There's no way you can win. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last up, we've got another story from Reddit. Reddit user Sean Frickin' Michaels writes, I, 15M, am a huge WWE, WWF fan. Of course you are. And live in an apartment with my family. Mm. However, no one was home. I had come up the elevator, and as soon as the door opened, I saw a man at the other end. Dude was wearing a mask which was one of those devilish goat masks with huge horns. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty spooked out by his mask, but hey, it's mandatory to wear a mask, and maybe he thinks this looks neat on him. So no biggie, until he tilted his head, He's and from the back pocket produced a vicious-looking knife. I ran and tried to get to my door before him, but he was surprisingly fast. And that's where WWE comes in. <laughs> Drop kick. As I see him closing in on me, I hit him with a move called the spear, which is basically running into your opponent's belly with your shoulder. I then quickly opened up the door and locked it. I called my dad instead of the police, but of course, by the time he reached, <laughs> no one was out there. By the time he reached, no one was out there. Reached what? The void. The void. Um, <laughs> Keep in mind, the whole time I was reaching for my own void. Now this this guy was uh, 15 years old, male. This is real man, man. This is real man, man. Yeah, this is, this is. I mean. This has to be real, cause it's like. Even the way it was I mean, written Sean at the top. Sean frickin' Michaels. 15 year old male. 15 M. 15 M, I think yes. Matt Carney is also. 15. Matt frickin' Carney. A wrestling fan. Yes, yes. I, I think I think he wrote this with his own hand. It is real, <laughs> according to the, you know, Sean frickin' Michaels. But it, it looks like there's other people on that thread that said that they too had heard of this masked menace. Well, you can just buy a goat mask anywhere. Right? What would you do? Would you run towards or away? I would, the void. I would not run towards a man with a knife and a goat mask. I wouldn't either. I mean, I will refer back to the the scaredest I've ever been. It was the the episode of Ear Biscuits that I I talked about when me and Christy went out on the RV. We went on a on a a, a van life trip. If you haven't seen it, and this dude drives up. Well. I, I tell I tell the it's story. A whole, it's a long story. You I'm not going to tell the story, the but it. I mean, these stories remind me of what happened to me on that trip, and it was just the scaredest I've ever been. But I survived. It was the scaredest I've ever been, and I just listened to the story. What What was the name of that episode? Do you know what we're calling it? <laughs> we don't know what we call it. Something them. about Lynx trip, van trip, yeah. slash the Link almost got killed. Yeah, slash something like that. What? Hashtag killer. Hashtag void. Hashtag tag touch the slippery void. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the rope, man. Get the playful and colorful mythical embroidered hoodie now at mythical.com.